Hello friends, welcome back to Go Agile Part 10. I know we are continuing after quite a while. So far we reviewed introduction to Agile, different Agile frameworks, Kanban, Scrum and so on. To a large extent, we saw how a Scrum team operates taking a feature and trying to build sprint by sprint. Imagine there is one Scrum team, perhaps six to nine members. Let's say they are trying to build a particular feature. The team rolls out a part of it at the end of each sprint. Then after seven or eight or whatever, depending on the size of the feature or project, they would have completed it. Let's say it took 10 sprints, which is 20 weeks to roll out the full project. Nice. Now in enterprises, that's not how it works. There could be a large initiative and it may require 100, 200, 300, we don't know. I mean, it may be a large number of people to work simultaneously on the same initiative. But the entire project should be completed in, let's say, for example, 20 weeks or 30 weeks, whatever. So you want to use the Scrum model or any Agile model, but at the same time, figure out a way for more people to parallelly work on the same initiative in sync and alignment and still close the project in the same 20 or 30 or 40 weeks. How do we achieve it? That's where scaling models come into play. So let's see what types of these scaled models are available today. Each of them have their own advantages and disadvantages, but bottom line, they all exist and companies use them. We will mainly look at four models. Actually, there are uh, many more models, but uh, uh, as a sample, we'll just cover these four. And even I'm not an authority on all this, but uh, let me share what I know, and this could be handy if you're looking for some quick inputs on the different scaled agile models. The four we will review are uh, Scrum at Scale, Nexus Framework, Less, which is a large scale Scrum, and Safe, which is a scaled agile framework. After we review the three models, uh, Scrum at scale, Nexus and less. Then we will go into more details on safe. Hope that works. So let's start uh, with Scrum at scale. So Scrum at scale is a logical extension to your Scrum framework. It provides a structure for you to grow Scrum teams organically, customizing to your specific organizational needs. Dr. Jeff Sutherland, uh, who is the co-creator of uh, Scrum, he created this uh, Scrum at scale framework. So as we saw, if Scrum enables development and delivery of complex products by a single team, on the other hand, Scrum at scale efficiently coordinates this new ecosystem of Scrum teams. This is achieved by setting up a minimum viable bureaucracy via a scale-free architecture. And some companies tried running multiple Scrum teams, but due to the interdependencies, duplication of work or uh, lack of prioritization of uh, various activities across teams, things didn't go really well. It resulted in the speed and quality of output taking a hit. To overcome this, Scrum at Scale was developed effectively to coordinate multiple Scrum teams. One of the main objectives is uh, as you add more teams to the framework, there should be an increase in the delivery output of the product. And also as a group, the ability to respond to change should increase. Okay, that is uh, Scrum at Scale. Next, let's look at uh, Nexus framework. Nexus again is an agile framework that is used for scaling agile projects, uh, but to a moderate size, say three to nine scrum teams, each made up of five to nine members uh, roughly. And here there is one common product backlog used by all of the teams. And here also they have a, a sprint planning, sprint backlog, and additionally they introduced a new term called as the integration team. Typically the integration team consists of a product owner, scrum master, and one or more members from each team. So what do they do? The main purpose of this integration team is to coordinate the work of all the scrum teams so they ensure that their completed work integrates well and is in harmony without any conflict. Obviously, it becomes uh, more important when the teams are growing and with more teams, you need a stronger integration team as they are all working for the same cause using the same product backlog. So here, the standard product backlog is refined as much as possible to the best extent and one of the goals of the sprint planning is every team should have clarity on their portion of the work without any dependence on other teams. So the sprint backlog should have clarity on which team is working on which tasks in that sprint. While a sprint is going on, there are multiple integrations daily in order to immediately identify and resolve any coding conflicts. So it is imperative that all teams, irrespective of where they are located, must integrate at least once daily with their completed product into the code base. While there's a daily scrum for each team, but there's also a daily Nexus scrum meeting, just like uh, your scrum of scrums. Then of course, there's a Nexus sprint retrospective and a Nexus review after each sprint. Nexus is designed to handle projects with up to 100 people. They also introduced another version, Nexus Plus, 
for projects needing over 100 people and perhaps uh, into thousands. To conclude, you need to be really well organized to run Nexus because integrating on a daily basis is the key and you know how challenging it's uh, normally in enterprises to uh, do these kind of integrations on a daily basis. Then let's move on to the less. So less is large scale scrum and, and we'll cover about the less part uh, a little later. Sometime around uh, 2005, Bas Wade and Craig Larman developed the less framework. They used scrum principles and rules and applied on large scale projects. Their goal was to develop large scale projects successfully while staying within the constraints of scrum. There are two types of less. One is uh, basic less and the other is less huge. Basic less has two to eight teams of about eight people working on the same product development, whereas uh, less huge is can can go up to even two thousand people uh, working on the same product development. Basic less is very similar to a one team Scrum extended version. Uh, so generally in less there is one product backlog, one product owner, one definition of done, one common sprint, and one potentially shippable product at the end of each sprint. Since all teams are working on implementing the same product, all teams are cross-functional. The key difference between a regular scrum and less is in less, sprint planning is done separately as two meetings. In one meeting, the product owner meets with representatives from all teams to decide which product backlog items they will do in the next sprint. Some of the same work may be shared with two or more teams. The second meeting held in parallel or shortly after the first is a meeting of all the members of each team. For coordination purposes, the team meetings may be held in different sections of the same area, but separately. This setup is helpful when uh, teams can get clarifications from other teams. And there, there's also a daily scrum meeting for each team. Uh, but interestingly, just for information sharing purposes, a member of one team may sit in on uh, a daily scrum meeting of another team. Les also holds an open town hall meeting. This is mainly for any sharing and coordination again. And this is somewhat similar to your scrum of scrums. Similarly, you have the product backlog meeting, sprint review, retrospective, and so on. Less huge is similar to basic less, except in less huge, there are what they call multiple area product owners. The area product owners and the one overall product owner make up the product owner team. And depending on the size, there may also be additional product managers. They divide into each requirement area and each such area has four to eight teams. And since work done under less huge is usually multiple area teams of four to eight teams and basic less is two to eight teams. The basic functioning of team under basic less and less huge is the same. The main goal or mission of less is to solve things as simply as possible with lesser roles, lesser management and lesser organizational structures. While it is true that less stands for large scale scrum, but less also stands for the real less, meaning everything done with less or small. Next, we'll move on to the SAFE, which is the Scaled Agile Framework. SAFE was created by Dean Leffingwell. It's more of an interactive framework that enables you to apply lean, agile, and scrum practices at large enterprises. SAFE went through a number of versions and currently version five is running. And by the way, I am a SAFE program consultant in five. We'll spend more time on SAFE in the forthcoming episodes, but today I'll give a very high level introduction. So in SAFE, you have four levels, essential, large solution, portfolio, and full. Depending on your enterprise, the size, the need, you can choose to go with any level and implement. SAFE is highly prescriptive in nature that it tells organizations exactly what to do. Training and certifications uh, are well-structured and readily available. SAFE is also relatively easy to transition to and you can adopt to a fairly high level of SAFE. The real success in transformation depends on how you can adopt to your enterprise needs. If you try to implement all the bells and whistles, it could be an overkill. It could result in unwanted complexities and overhead. While being prescriptive is a strong point of SAFE, it is also a negative in that it does not allow teams to be as flexible in process decisions sometimes. And so it may not be that adaptive. But bottom line, it is the most popular among all the scaled agile frameworks implemented by many organizations and proven. So we'll go into more details uh, of SAFE uh, later. And today I'm concluding uh, this uh, Go Agile 10 here. Until we meet again, happy scrumming. See you.